Um, just a second. I'm almost done. Even after all this work, it could all go to crap. Um, if not properly taken care of. Or blow dried, for that matter. Also, what I was doing. That's when it was. That's when it was well, actually moist, and now it became dry. No time. Just lots, lots, lots of nuts in your hair. Mom, how long have you? I guess how long have you been doing hair for? Hmm. Yeah, well, look cute. Just do my own hair mm -hmm. by myself. Who taught you how to do hair then? Nobody. I you learn on your own? Yep. <laughs> I didn't have mother to do my hair. Mm. And then when I had to, to do my own hair, mm -hmm. I have to learn to do my own hair. So I watched when I was when I was a kid and we had a couple um, young girls who were older than me and then so we used to do each other hair. So you would watch them? And I watch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I continue watching. And when I when I go to, to the hairdresser, so I learn. I I I watched I see what they do, and then when I go home and I do it by myself, so I sort of go back to the hairdresser, so I think I do the same thing they do. Mm -hmm. And so, um, let me say, so, how does that, like, did you, so did you, because you haven't taught us all how to do hair, right? So, like, have you ever, like, formally taught us how to do hair? Yeah, but you copy, and also I taught you by by doing in front of you, and then by explaining you what to do when you go in the shower, and after the shower, that's a that's that's a, a, a part of learning. That's that's how I teach you how to do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Since, since since like babies, you see mothers we go to the the store, they buy barrels, they buy ribbons and they're taking care of the little girl hair, making nice braid. And it's the part it's the part of our culture as well. Right? Mm -hmm. To preserve that 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 beauty, that keep that culture and it's your hair. Saying like I don't understand how to like single it out. Like when I do mine, I can only do two big ones all the way back. I can never get just like the small ones. You have to learn. You learn everything in life. Right? It's practice also. Practice you watch and then you practice. Hi, what do you say? I said thank you. Ladies. So, can whoever wants to start, whoever wants to take the floor. The uh, <laughs> floor as in whoever wants to speak first. Can you actually give some context? This is a Friday afternoon. Yeah. We're also hanging out. We're watching our favorite movie. <laughs> Right? And then this girl wants us to wants to ask us about her, her hair. When did you start learning to do your hair and how did you start learning to do your hair? So I've always been doing hair. Mm -hmm. I did everybody's hair and I just always liked doing hair. I started with my dolls. My mom showed me how to do hair and then I just wanted to learn how to braid. I liked styling different hair and all my sisters <coughs> have different types so I learned to deal with just different types of hair. 
Um, and then I wanted to be able to do mine. So I learned how. Mm-hmm. Well, I've never liked doing hair. I hated doing it. I didn't like my hair. I was in love with it. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Listen, I feel like this is important to add because... No, I'm it's not, a, it's, not I, a, it's not a this beautiful, like, nice process that everyone on YouTube makes you think it is. It's, it's, it's horrific it's at times. Dedication. Really frustrating in Ottawa is that when you when I started, I decided to start doing my hair myself, just washing, straining. You have to buy so much products, and then you're always changing because you're not not sure what's what's uh, you know good on your hair. Sometimes it's like an eight hour thing. Like you have to wash, condition, hair, uh, dry, and then you're like, oh, is this product actually good on my hair? Or is it just me that didn't apply it properly? Right. Mm. So then you're buying so many products. I got frustrated with just buying that. So. I just rather give my money to the to hairstylist who has different products, and then she kind of just monthly she'll be like, oh, you know, your hair needs more this, more that, and it's just it's been great. It's been easier not having to go through different the limited black stores that we have in Ottawa to try to find a product that may not even be suitable for my hair. And so it's like it's just a frustrating process overall because like you can spend all this money and like time and energy. And some people can monopolize because they know there's very few. Out exactly. There. That. Like I heard like when the natural trend came in, there was a very few natural salons and they were charging an arm and a leg just mm -hmm. to like, oh yeah, this is the the product that you need and they can do that because where else are you gonna go? So how are you getting in contact with other people who are you doing your hair? You literally don't. I'm fighting for a, for a first spot. Yeah, yeah, I'm not gonna go broadcast her yeah. for for her to have less yeah. availability, right? Yeah, I would agree that specifically to the hair community, it's a lot of word of mouth. So like, it's just a matter of like actually asking the right people. Like, you also get a better experience when you know the person. Like, if you know the per like if the person knows you, like it's not as stressful to book appointments with them. Like the time there isn't as stressful. Like they put better care into your hair. So. Do you think your kids are going to be better off? Definitely. Okay. Not so, only am I going to teach them, people are, are more accepting. Also in Ottawa, there was less, less of a black community. Yeah. Right. There's, there's a lot, there's a growing black community and people who have different hair textures. Yeah. So it's just like also the kids are growing up with seeing different yeah, kids that exactly. look like that. And on TV. With different hairstyles, not just mm. natural, but if they, they want it straight or whatever, they have the option of learning and understanding that it's okay to have this type of hair, that type of hair. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. You ready? <laughs> okay, Miss Claudette. So you said you started from since you were 15? Yeah. And I start in school. Um, I've never done nothing else in my life. This is the only job I've ever done. The only thing I've ever liked. Loved, I should say. You know, hairdressing is hard. You have to really love it to want to be in it. And you have to not just wash in actually do the hair you have to know a little bit about the hair each texture is different you know there's a lot of black hairdressers but most that i know work in a white salon i do specialize in my clients my black clients because they hear it difficult a lot of them is it because they've like referred them from like other people word of mouth yeah that's what has got me through all this word of mouth i do one head and it's just gone oh my god i have a whole lot of customers a whole lot for over 20 years, I do have quite a oh bit. Oh my goodness. And How so, long you with me now, baby? Oh, uh, since I was a kid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's true. Most of them, all my young people have been with me for years. Mm -hmm. Get older, get married, they do them, mm -hmm. their wedding, and their kids now. People who have their hair really tight and they'll say, oh, I hate my hair. Why do you hate it, baby? Mm. You can't change what you have. You got to learn to take care of it and just love what you have and work it. Quite a few of my young ones that I do, I actually have trained them mm. to love the hair, right, baby? Mm -hmm. And teach them how to keep it looking nice, how to wrap it, and when to look after it, when mm -hmm. not to. So it's a combination of um, of um, not just doing the hair, mm -hmm. it's actually helping them learn to take care of the hair and yeah. love what they have because it's ours.